Our first speaker is Liz Abenante. She's going to be telling all of you about her knitting adventures and how, well, math is awesome. So here she is. Feedback. That's what that feedback sound was earlier, was we had two microphones on at once. Hi! See, a few of you have seen me speak before, so you know when I do that, you're supposed to say hi back. Hi back! Hi back! Uh, not holler back, but hi back. Um, anyways, good morning, everyone. So, knitting is a thing that I do, that I used to do. I used to do it as a full-time career. I would design knitting patterns and sell them to people. This is a thing people pay money for. You put like 20 hours of your life into knitting that thing, uh, writing up a schematic for that thing, technically editing that thing, taking photos of that thing, marketing that thing, and then you charge people $6 for each PDF they buy. <laughs> for 20 hours of work, $6 per PDF, which like actually adds up and like you can make a living off of it, but it's a lot of work. It's, it's hard, um, but I did this for a few years. Before I was a software engineer, I was a knitwear designer. And like, you meet people at a bar, you make new friends, and they're like, oh, what do you do? I design knitting patterns, crickets. Just like, nobody, nobody has like any understanding of like what that involves or what that is, and that's fine. It's just a very niche industry. But when I became a programmer, or rather when I decided I wanted to get into programming, I kind of left it behind for a little bit. And I was like, knitting is so completely different from programming that they're basically completely separate entities. I would never, ever, ever combine the two. And then I was having a really, really hard time mastering algorithms in Ruby. Um, and by mastering, I mean just even able to write them and understand them. Uh, it was really hard and like it was really, really sad. So I went on a little bit of a journey and I was like, how can I find a way to make algorithms and Ruby and programming, how can I get over this? Because every time somebody would ask me about an algorithm and talk to me about it, I would just like deer in headlights, like, I don't know, why are you asking me this question? And I would like run away. It was really sad. And so I decided I was gonna overcome this and so I made it my personal fucking quest to like figure out how to math in programming. Because uh, I've always thought of myself as not good at math, but it turns out knitting is just math. I don't know if you know this, but knitting is just math. And so from there on, I kind of adapted myself and went on a little bit of a journey a couple times, and then a few more times, and then some more. And then what's really not pictured here is I actually rewrote all of these knitting programs five or six times. So I didn't ever consider myself to be super into yak shaving until I thought about knitting and programming because I knew so much about knitting. I was an expert in knitting, but I was so new at programming that I didn't recognize what I was doing was yak shaving. And I was like, oh, I'm doing things that programmers do. I'm solving the same problem 5,000 times. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that maybe. Just try something new. But it was great because I looked at my own progress and I learned math in programming, which wasn't as hard as I thought it was. And I started all this with Ruby and as I got more and more into front-end development, I was like, hey, maybe, maybe I could do this with JavaScript. Like, maybe this would be fun. Maybe this is something that I could share with people instead of just like a script I run for myself to help me design patterns. And so you're sitting there like, yeah, knitting is just math. She told me this, I'm totally sold. This is a great idea. Like, what could possibly go wrong here? And it turns out like, there's a lot that can go wrong. Uh, how many of you have ever knit something from a pattern before? This is way smaller than the people I've given this to before, so, you know. But I prepared, I was prepared. Um, but so a lot of things can go wrong when you do knitting and JavaScript or knitting and programming in general. But just to convince you of how bad the problem actually is, here are some alternate titles I considered for this talk. Everything possible went wrong because everything possible did go wrong. I don't know if you know this, but children have huge heads. Like really big heads. Like, you know, I have my head and then there's a toddler head. Like, I don't know how, but it's, it's bigger. Uh, maybe I have a small head, but I was trying to make things for children and the program would say, okay, a child's head is this big, but it would like 
come out like a little cone head and it wouldn't really fit and like everything went wrong. I, I was generating things for the wrong sizes for the wrong people. It was really sad. Another title for this talk could have just been LOL Math because we've all been there. Uh, why? Why would you do this to yourself? Why did you think this was a good idea? And actual objects programming is another way to think about this. And like we all often talk about like object-oriented programming and what that means, but I'm talking about programming actual objects, programming to make an actual thing. And so like all these like abstract concepts from OO programming that like I, I kind of thought I understood, I'm like, oh, that doesn't even matter because I'm making a real thing. Who gives a shit what the code looks like unless the code is making the thing look right? Like, I get to pick which one looks right, code or thing, code or thing. Pick the thing. Always pick the thing. Um, this was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, but it turned out to be worth effort because by the time I finished the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th iteration of this, I knew way more about programming and math and programming and knitting and programming and just programming in general than I had ever known before. And so, since we have many non-knitters in the audience, I have prepared a brief overview for you of what exactly a knitting pattern is, because you're probably like, okay, this is great, but like, what are you doing? You're calculating the number, but what do you use that number for? Let's talk about knitting. I've got definitions for you. This is so exciting. Um, somebody tweeted a little while ago that they can never spell the word gauge, and I was like, that person is not a knitter. Uh, because the word gauge is like the only word you ever hear a knitter say ever. Uh, it's just the one word we know. It's it. It's all we got. We know no other words. It's just gauge. You just talk to us and we're like, what'd you have for breakfast? Gauge. Uh, and so gauge is basically how many stitches you fit into an inch or how many rows you fit into an inch. And that can be an inch. It can be four inches. It can be 10 centimeters, which pro tip is the same thing as four inches. But you have your set number and it changes based on the thing you're making, the yarn you're using, the needles you're using. So it's this hugely variable thing, more variable than say like even your handwriting, which changes pretty regularly as well. We also have a term called cast on, which you're going to see a bit here in a few minutes, and that's the number of stitches that you start with, stitches that you put on your needle to just get going. And so there are also some fun quirks about knitting patterns that make it a little difficult. Knitting patterns come in both imperial and metric units, so that means you have to display everything in inches and centimeters, yards, and meters. And I don't know if you've ever done any unit conversions, but that adds a whole new layer of fun. And then there's also <laughs> every single garment type. How many of you wear clothes? Right. Uh, every single garment type that you buy, you buy a small, a medium, a large. And when you look at the size chart online, if you like to shop online like I do, uh, you're like, okay, what's the waist measurement? What's the hip measurement? But never do you get like length of the thigh in a pant, width of the knee, width of the calf. Can you imagine spending weeks or months of your life making a sweater based on one measurement? Like the circumference of your chest is the only measurement that will be in a pattern to make something that you're supposed to pull over and wear and have a specific fit and style. Like that just, like you have, to, you have to take that into account when you're doing all this math. You have to think about what that measurement correlates to, your waist, your hips, your shoulders, your armholes. Did you know that armhole measurements are a thing? I found out that I have small armholes, or well, my clothes have small armholes. I guess I like have small armpits, I don't know. Anyways, yeah, so one measurement to rule them all, which is like kind of shitty, but we all have multiple points at which we would prefer to fit. Like it just, it's kind of a weird, like odd, odd industry when we all want to make our own clothes. You would think of like a tailor would make something to fit perfectly. They're not going to do that from one fucking measurement. They're going to do it from all of the points of measurement. And knitting patterns, just like programming, just, just like programming, every single person has different opinions on how to do different things, and every single one of them is right. And you have to know which one is right for the thing that you're doing, and you gotta be willing to defend that position to death. It's really difficult. There's also customer service, which sucks. How many of you maintain like open source things that people put issues and PRs in? Like at least one of you. 
maybe three participants. Thank you, participants. I like you, participants. I don't like the rest of you yet. I'm holding out. I'm waiting. A little wake up. I know it's early. Um, but customer service is hard. When somebody puts in an issue on your PR and they're like, um, this does not work in IE 10, and I really, really would like it if it also worked in IE 9. And you're like, uh, I don't have time for that. How about you take care of it? And it turns into like this passive aggressive debate over whether or not you should do this and whether or not they should do it. And it just gets frustrating and it's exhausting. Well, try adding some money to that transaction. Six dollars entitles you to argue with someone for weeks. Weeks and weeks. I was going to screen cap some of the really terrible emails that I have received from people who have bought knitting patterns from me, but I was like, I don't want to scare people away. Knitters carry pointy things, like they don't need to know that we are really like mean and awful inside. But people feel entitled. Like they spend the six dollars and if it does not work for them, if they cannot figure it out, it is your fault. And so like JavaScript doesn't know how to handle this. JavaScript doesn't know how to go in and make an explanation for you. And even the tiny problems, like determining how big the armhole for something needs to be, they get more complicated the bigger the garment gets. Or not, well, not bigger, but the more, you know, armholes the garment has. So what does it actually mean? <laughs> I like that there was like trail off laughter there. Uh, nobody just really wanted to give in and laugh. Uh, so what does it actually mean to actually generate a knitting pattern? If you've never used one, you're like, okay, there's numbers. I get it, there's numbers. There's a lot of numbers. Um, but there's also more than that. A knitting pattern is a schematic to reasonably reproduce something. It's how you can expect to make the thing. I made this dress that I'm wearing and it came from a sewing pattern and just like a knitting pattern, it contains the instructions to make a reasonable replica. This is the materials table from a pattern that I wrote a long time ago. There's a lot of shit up here that doesn't actually matter, but let's go through it one by one. So you've got yarn and you're like, okay, cool. This is how much. I need to make a thing. And you'll see that it's in imperial and metric units because heaven forbid somebody break out a fucking calculator. And then you've got the needle, which you'll note is not, that's not imperial and metric. Guess what? Don't convert that ever. If you ever, 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 ever try to convert that, knitters will be like, what does that mean? I don't understand, it's so confusing. That's the standard. So, okay, sure, I get it. This could be metric, and we'll just leave that one alone. Uh, and then you have the next thing. Oh no, you didn't go to the next thing. Oh, you did, okay. <laughs> uh, you have the next thing, which is that 16 inches, which you'll notice is also not converted. Don't convert that one either. Just don't. So these are, like, you have imperial and metric units to refer to the tool. The one tool that you're using to knit the thing. It's like saying, you want Ruby version 2.3.1, or that you're using a specific version of JavaScript, like, but also the other one. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But it's the standard. It's the convention. And so my program has to know this is a convention, and it has to know not to convert this. And then you have your gauge, which is what I mentioned earlier, and you'll see here that it's presented in 4 inches slash 10 centimeters because one inch slash 2.54 centimeters is annoying and it's confusing. So you're more often than not using four inches to represent a measurement, which gets really tedious. And then you have your finished sizes, which of course have to be in both sets of measurements too. You also have an abbreviations table, which if you use variables ever, makes sense. Thing on left, yeah, left. Thing on left represents thing on right. I don't know why I couldn't just remember that. I write variables all the goddamn time. Uh, and then you have schematics. People can knit from this. Like, this is how you knit a thing. Like, there's a legend on the side, and those symbols mean things, and you can just knit it. Like, and it looks like that. It looks like a little X. It's actually pretty cool. And then those are the written instructions for that, because a lot, there's actually a surprising number of blind knitters, and charts are not accessible, but row-by-row row instructions are accessible. And then after all of that boilerplate, this is the knitting pattern. These are the instructions for the whole thing. This is just a scarf, so it's relatively simple. Um, but, you know, that's it. You've got like five pages of boilerplate, and then, what, how many sentences? One, two, three, four, 
five, six sentences. Seven. That one's really short. Seven sentences for five pages of boilerplate. Like, that's a lot of effort. And like, it seems pretty easy to just calculate the differences between inches and centimeters, and then round up and round down, and like tell people how much they need of the thing. You are wrong, it is not easy, it is terrible, it is hard. It is awful, it is the worst. Because there's a big difference between doing math to do math and get an answer to a problem, and doing math to make a thing. Math for math's sake is, I'm gonna say easy, even though math is hard, it's the worst, it's terrible. But it's like miles easier than doing math to make a thing. Like figuring out the proportions and rounding up and rounding down, these are difficult decisions. And for that scarf, it was pretty easy because scarves don't care about your chest circumference or your waist or your height, they just care that it wraps around your neck once. Scarves are not picky, they're nice, we like them. They're easy. But when you need to think about people, when your math is about people, your math becomes harder because I don't know if you know this, but people are different. I learned this when I was working on knitting patterns. I had never known that before. And so when you start with something simple, like a cowl, I used to live in Chicago. This is like an inch and a half thick of just fluffy, fluffy wool, and it like keeps you warm and keeps the snow out of your face. Um, but there's two measurements here. There's circumference and height. It's pretty straightforward. As long as it goes over your head, it doesn't matter. But then you get to a hat, and you have to think about circumference and height and slope, because you can't just have a, like it's like putting a can of soup on your head if you don't have a slope. Like, that's not warm, it doesn't feel good. And then what if you're making a sock? I don't know if you know this, but shoes come in one size. You, I wear a seven and a half. I have to buy them as a seven and a half, but that doesn't take into account your instep, the toe box size, if you have a small ankle, or if you have a huge like ankle bone. It doesn't take anything like that into account, but knitting patterns do. And so socks are like ascending to the next layer of hell. And then the final layer of hell, where we just like all admit defeat and go home and cry, is when you're trying to actually make a thing that somebody would wear that's visible on top of their clothes. It's like a hat you wear, you know, when you walk to the bus, and then you can hide it in your bag so nobody sees your shame that you made the mistake. And like, you can do the same thing for your socks. You wear them in your shoes, nobody sees your shame. But when you make a sweater or a t-shirt, why would you knit a t-shirt? Please explain this to me. Like, knitters make t-shirts all the time and I don't get it. It seems uncomfortable. I think it, like, is dumb. Whatever. But it's still complicated. It's still very, very difficult. And, like, I can't even give you the number of measurements that you need to calculate to make sure you get this right. And so it's not just start with a chest circumference and go from there and scale up everything proportionally because that's not how people work. That's not how people are shaped. And so even though I knew all of this, even though I knew that writing an Indian pattern from scratch was hard, I decided that I was gonna write a custom hat pattern app in JavaScript. And that was gonna be something that users could use. It is users. Uh, I wanted to get their gauge and their desired size. And so that's the number of stitches that they have in an inch and then how big they want the thing to be. And I started with hats, because hats for the most part are pretty simple. While some people might have like slightly conier heads than others, for the most part, people's heads come in consistent sizes, shapes, and slopes. So it's a relatively consistent formula. Uh, and then I wanted to be able to spit out a pattern for them. And so I just had those two little things, the tiniest, just, just gauge, just size, that was it, and from there I could go. And just for reference, back to the materials page, that's those two things. And from the gauge and finish size, I would tell them how much yarn they needed, and then also the actual step-by-step -step instructions of when to cast on, when to decrease, what to do, yada, yada. Turns out I had endless problems doing this, but they really distilled down to three actual hard problems that I needed to figure out a way to solve. Problem one was rounding. I don't know if any of you ever worked in finances, but try rounding money, that's fun too. So I had to figure out what I was gonna cast on, how many stitches I was gonna cast on, because that's where you start. You start with the brim of a hat and you work your way up. You can go the other way, but nobody does that, it's not cool. You always start here and go up. So I needed to figure it out. I needed to think about it. And there's a formula for that, like, of course. It's your gauge divided by four times the desired size. In this case, my desired size is a circumference. And so we start out with a gauge of 19 stitches for four inches. 
And we have a circumference, also 19 inches. That's like a little smaller than my head just for scale. I know my hair is pretty flat today, so it's like a good demonstration. Uh, and then I calculate the raw cast on, and then I round it down to the nearest four, and I round it up to the nearest four. And you're like, well, why would you round that up or down, Liz? I don't understand. Fun thing about knitting, it's never just knitting. It's knitting with motifs, with patterns, with, mo with designs, with lace, with cables, with ribbing. And so I need a multiple of four to have ribbing to make my hat stretchy so that it stays on my head instead of just falls on my face or falls off my head even worse. So I still don't know which one I want. Do I want to round down or do I want to round up? When you look at the actual math, the raw cast on is just perfectly in the middle of two multiples of four. So I have either 88 or 92. Which one do I choose? If I pick 88, I'll have a circumference of 18.5, which is a little too small. If I pick 92, I will have a circumference of 19.3, which is a little too large. And you're like, a third of an inch? That's fine. Have you tried to wear a pair of jeans that are a third of an inch too big? How did that work out for you? I'm just curious. Think about it. But it looks like a small thing, like a half an inch, a third of an inch. That's not that big of a deal. But like software, there are problems with scale. And what if we change our gauge to something massive, like that big fluffy cowl I showed earlier, where I had one and a half stitches for every single inch. That's like this big. It's amazing, it's so warm. But it also makes the math really, really, really hard. And so when we have a desired size and our raw cast on, and we're like, OK, it's either I cast on 40 or 44. That's only, that's only four stitches difference. Four stitches? That's going to give me something that is almost two and a half inches too small or one and a third inches too big. Once your gauge gets bigger, your problems get bigger because you have less precision in your math and less precision, pre be, 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 uh, precision in your measurement. Also, problems of complexity. I gave the example of ribbing to keep a hat on your head but say you want this like beautiful lace motif that's fancy and has butterflies in it. And that's a multiple of 13 instead of a multiple of four. That's different too. It brings more hell, more fun. And so when I round up and down to the next 13, the range between those two numbers is much, much, much larger. 108 or 117. And, you know, that's an inch and a quarter too small or just over an inch too big. But you also have to take into account what that motif looks like at that number of repeats. If you're making butterflies, for example, God, that's a terrible example. I should pick something better. If you're making sunshines. If you're making sunshines and you have two of them right next to each other, maybe that doesn't look as good as if there were three. Maybe it looks better with three. Maybe it looks worse with three. And JavaScript doesn't know that. You also get to do those wonderful unit conversions I talked about. And all the math I was doing here was from imperial to metric, which is inches to centimeters. And it turns out that imperial numbers are much larger and therefore less precise. So rounding comes back to bite you in the ass yet again. So really, unit conversions are just more rounding problems. And so you're like, OK, metric is more precise. Those are smaller numbers. I'll do metric and then convert to imperial, and it'll be great. But that has problems, too, because measuring 6 tenths of an inch is really shitty. It just sucks. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen how tiny those little marks are on rulers and measuring tape, but like, I am old. I have glasses. Like, I don't have time for that shit. So, you know, you got to pick your battles. And so, again, rounding is the like, villain here. And so really kind of like the long story short is that unit conversions and rounding Compound your problems and make them worse. They make your job harder. And you could, if you're a designer doing this from scratch, just do two sets of calculations and pick the best one for your design, which is great. And an experienced designer can totally do that in a heartbeat. Like, she'd just sit down and be like, oh, yeah, I clearly want that and that and that because it'll just work better for everyone. But JavaScript can't do that for you. And so there's a lot of domain knowledge in knitting, in case you hadn't gathered from all the, you know, abbreviations and wonky schematics. But JavaScript can't handle that. JavaScript doesn't like domain knowledge. 
it can't take the integrity of a design into account, and it definitely can't understand the shapes and sizes of people's bodies or heads or feet. And it makes those modifications even more difficult. And an experienced designer can hide them. They can mask those and make one-off changes to their algorithms so that your design can work. And so what JavaScript wants, the easy thing that JavaScript wants to do is take this and make it work for everyone, isn't a reality. Like it's, you just can't do that with garments, with clothing. And so JavaScript can't tell you if what you're doing is bad. It can't tell you if your calculation is wrong. It can't tell you if your calculation is for a lizard instead of a child. And if you're in the back, and if you're like, but it can, it totally can, have fun. I'm not doing it. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> uh, so I've been rambling about like all this stuff, but what actually went wrong? What went wrong? Flashback to earlier, a lot went wrong. Um, users suck. Users are the worst. Um, users do really, really, really silly things. Knitting is one of those things that's super variable, and like maybe one day they've got a really tight gauge, and another day they've got a really loose gauge, and then they put in a bad number, and your program explodes and gives them something terrible, which results in every single person, every single user is now an edge case because you have to be concerned with their mistakes. Your program has to worry about how much they know about knitting. Are they gonna know that that's a bad calculation? Probably not. And so it turned out that my two small things, gauge and size, were not actually small. They were very big. And they cause a lot of problems because they're infinite permutations of gauge and size. Gauge can be anywhere from one to a hundred. Oh my God, if you're doing a hundred stitches in four inches, your hands would be so painful. Ugh. But there's, because there's so many permutations, you're just, it's pretty much how I ended up with all of the code that I have is just shoulder shrug, move on. Like there's lots of comments, uh, question mark in the code. It's pretty entertaining. And so really like for me, this was a beautiful idea and I felt really bad. I felt that like, I had not done the thing. I had one fucking goal. Users give me two numbers and I give them instructions. Like, on the surface, that doesn't sound that hard, right? Uh, and so I felt really bad that people had this pattern app that I released to people. They used it. They made hats that fit lizards, not children. And I'm talking like iguana, maybe, not like gecko for some scale there. Uh, but so it was, I felt bad. I wasted people's time. It may only take me an hour to make a hat, but it might take somebody who's new four hours. And that's not a good feeling. And so I felt bad. But then I stepped back and I was like, well, wait a minute. The goal wasn't just to make an app. The goal was to learn about math and programming. The goal was to figure out the quirks of math in JavaScript, to figure out the quirks of math in Ruby, and to feel more confident as a programmer by using something I was an expert in, expert at, whichever works there, to get better at the thing I do for a living because I just want to make it rain money on me all the time. So I kind of saw the sunny side of this, and it's actually still a project that I work on. Uh, and it's something that I spend a lot of time on. I have not graduated from hats, still working on hats, uh, but you know, it's, it's a fun, challenging problem, and what are we not if people who are interested in problems? So that's it, that's JavaScript, that's knitting, that's why you shouldn't do it.